honorable opponents, moderators, ladies and gentlemen, the proposition which I have the honor and privilege to defend is that Jesus is the supreme deity. Naturally, I wouldn't be here attempting to defend such a proposition if I did not believe it with all my heart. As far as I am concerned, the Bible certainly teaches that Jesus Christ is the supreme deity. By Jesus, of course, we mean Jesus of Nazareth. And by supreme, we mean he is above all others, that he is the only true God. Now, Mr. Toffee, tonight, is taking the negative position, and he is denying that Jesus is the supreme deity. I am so thankful that I am not in his shoes tonight. I cannot think of any more serious thing for a man to do than to deny the supreme deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So my opponent tonight denies Christ's deity. Now I'm urging you people to tell it far and wide tonight that the so-called Church of Christ makes no bones about it, they deny the deity of Jesus. Of course, they answer, we do not deny his deity. They answer, we deny only his supreme deity. And so, we will hear a quibble of that sort put before us. They say they do not deny Christ's deity, they deny only his supreme deity. Pray tell me tonight, is a relative deity a possibility? Is it possible to be partly God, or God to a certain extent? I say if Jesus is not God overall, then he is not God at all. And that goes for anybody called God. If they are not God overall, I repeat, then they are not God at all. So it will not do to say that the Church of Christ, so-called Church of Christ, does not deny the deity of Christ, that they merely deny the supreme deity of Christ. I have been thinking that if Jesus is not the supreme deity, and if the Father, according to Mr. Toby, is equal with Jesus, and if the Holy Spirit is also the co-equal of Jesus, then neither the Father nor the Holy Spirit can be the supreme deity. I asked Mr. Toby tonight, who is your supreme deity if Jesus is not? He dare not point me to the Father and say, There you see the supreme deity. Because he tells me in the second proposition he is convinced that the Father is co-equal with Jesus. So he dare not point to the Father and say, There is my supreme deity. If Jesus is not supreme deity, and the Father is the co-equal of Jesus, then neither is the Father supreme deity. And the same goes for the Holy Spirit. If Mr. Toddy points to the Holy Spirit, and says the Holy Spirit is supreme deity, then we are obliged to draw the attention to the fact that he believes, according to proposition number two, that the Holy Spirit and Jesus are co-equal. If Jesus is not supreme deity, then neither is the Holy Spirit. So Mr. Toby tonight is in the unenviable and the curious position of having no supreme deity at all. Each person in his heavenly committee, according to him, is one-third of God only. There is no person in the universe, hear it, 
No person in the universe, no divine person in the universe to whom he can point and say, there is supreme deity. I have had this same debate with a Roman Catholic priest of the Jesuit order. The proposition was, Jesus is the supreme deity. I affirmed, as I hope I'll always do, the Roman Catholic Jesuit priest, he denied that Jesus was the supreme deity because, as you know, Rome, the Church of Rome, happened to be the classical and the traditional Trinitarians. They have been Trinitarian since the year 325 A.D., at least. And so tonight it makes no difference whether I am debating with a so-called Church of Christ representative or whether I am debating with a round-collared priest of Rome. They will both speak with the same voice. So I can say tonight, paraphrasing their well-known slogan, that in this matter of whether or not Jesus is supreme deity, in this matter, the Church of Christ speaks where the Church of Rome speaks, and the Church of Christ, so-called, is silent where the Church of Rome is silent. There's no difference whatsoever in their respective positions in connection with this matter of the supreme deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. But watch it. <coughs> Mr. Totty will say some nice things about Jesus. Mr. Totty will praise Jesus. But if you listen carefully, you will discover that while he praises Jesus, and as he praises Jesus, he plunders him. To deny Jesus' supreme deity is to deny his deity. Get that clear? To deny his supreme deity is to deny his deity because a deity who is not supreme is no deity at all. Now, Jesus, Jesus is the Greek word, or the Greek form of the Hebrew word Yahushua, which means Jehovah, our Savior. And so our proposition tonight could read like this. The supreme deity of Jehovah, our Savior. Get that clear. When we stand for the supreme deity of Jesus, we are standing for the supreme deity of Jehovah, Savior, because that's the meaning of his name. Now then. Is Jesus the name of the Son only? We say no. Jesus is not the name of the Son only because in Hebrews chapter 1 and in verse 4 we are told that Jesus or the Son received his name by inheritance. Hebrews 1 and 4 being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now any son inherits his name from his father. My name is McGee simply because my dad's name is McGee. And so we are told the son inherits his name. In other words, he gets it from his father. In John 17 and verse 6 I read this. The son is speaking... And he says to the Father, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Jesus, I have manifested thy name, says the Son of the Father, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. In the 11th verse of John 17, in the revised version, Jesus the Son speaks of thy name, addressing the Father, thy name which thou hast given me. Thy name which thou hast given me, and that is repeated in the twelfth verse. Thy name, says the Son, which thou, the Father, hast given me. In John 5 and 43, Jesus says, I am come in my Father's name. Thus, the name of Jesus is the name of the Father and the Son. 
As Proverbs 30 and verse 4 says, What is his name? What is his son's name? If thou canst tell, because to know the name of the son is to know the name of the father, and to know the name of the father is to know the name of the son. So Jesus is not only the name of the son, Jesus is also the name of the father. Jesus is also the name of the Holy Spirit. John 14 and 26. The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send, says the Son, in my name. In Acts 16 and verse 7, in the revised version, or a good margin, you will read of the Spirit of Jesus. In Philippians 1 verse 19, you'll read plainly in the King James Version of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Christ. 